Like most great cities of the world, London is built by the water. For centuries, the mighty Thames provided easy access to the sea, a gateway to the world's richest and most powerful empire. Today, as sea levels rise, the river harbors the potential for the city's destruction. London prides itself on being well defended, with 185 miles of flood wall and eight barriers holding back the tidal Thames. In 1982, the Queen opened what was the jewel in the flood defence crown. It is a great tribute to the wisdom of Parliament and of successive governments that London has now been made free from the threat of flooding. The barrier was an engineering marvel, the biggest in the world. When high tides threatened to drown the capital, ten steel gates as tall as a five-storey building are drawn up. For over 20 years it has protected London. How much the city depends on it today is alarming. To give you an idea of the, the, the flood risk to London, if we didn't have the Thames Barrier here and we had a, a big flood through London, water levels would be at the top of the lampposts through the Albert and Victoria embankments. Sarah Lavery knows all about the flood threat to London. She works for the Environment Agency and runs a project called Thames 2100. Her job? To come up with a long-term solution to the growing threat of flooding. Flood defences are getting older. The Thames barrier was only designed to last up to 2030. Originally, barrier closures were expected once every two to three years. Today, it closes five or six times every year. With projected sea level rises and sea surges, the status quo is not an option. If we do nothing, just deal with the infrastructure we've got at the moment, we'll be closing the barrier. By, by about 2050, you'll be closing the barrier on almost every tide, and it will be overtopped on some tides. The very worst scenario would lead us to expect um, a, an additional flood level of three metres on top of top flood levels of today. There would be in excess of one and a quarter million people left in a, living and working in a flood risk area, over 80 billion pounds worth of property. There are 26 underground stations. There are 400 schools, 16 hospitals, power stations, there's an airport. It's, it's obviously something we can't allow to happen. With climate change, rising sea levels will mean even higher tides coming upstream. But this is not the only flood threat to London. We can also expect heavy rains. What also is uh, transparently a problem with London is it not only suffers from tidal waters coming up the river, but also fluvial flooding, flooding down the river from, once again, these torrential rainfalls. So we can get a double whammy when, uh, when both hit us at once. Add a giant sea surge to these flood threats, and London could face real peril. As sea levels rise, uh, it's the one in 10 year event that causes the real problems. It's the storm at sea that suddenly throws uh, the water up to much higher levels and creates the kind of flooding that is a real threat to the cities. Those giant sea surges have hit London in the past. On the 31st of January 1953, a catastrophic storm hurtled down the North Sea and forced its way up the Thames estuary. Flood defences were ripped apart. Hundreds were killed and tens of thousands had to be evacuated. Property damage ran into the millions. The Thames area was particularly badly hit. 58 people were drowned in Canvey Island, and in the village of Jaywick, 37 died.